Hello Year 6 and thank you for joining me today for an English taster lesson. Some of you will probably recognise me. My name's Miss Martin and I've got two very important roles at the Archer Academy. One of them is to be the head of lower school looking after Year 7, 8 and 9 but my other very important role is to be an English teacher. So today I would like to introduce you to English at the Archer Academy by doing a short lesson on how to structure a short story. I'm sure that you're finding that you've got a little bit of time on your hands and I thought this might be quite a nice project to get stuck into. So for today, what do you need? You need a pen and you need a pad of paper. So if you want to quickly run and get that now to get ready for the lesson while I get set up with your starter. Okay, so hopefully you've got your pen and your paper now. We're going to start with a super starter and I would like you to have a look at the diagram on the left where you've got five key points plotted against a diagram. You'll see exposition, rising action, climax, falling action and the resolution. What I'd like you to start thinking about is what do they mean? So this is the overall structure of a story. How might we explain each of those parts? Now to help you with this, I've written the description of each part in a coloured box. What I'd like you to do is match the description in the coloured box to the part of the story. So for example, what is exposition? Which coloured box best describes what you think the exposition at the start of the story does? So you should spend about one minute trying to match the definition to the part of the story. Now if you'd like to write a short story after this lesson, what I suggest you do is quickly copy down that diagram so that you get all of this information. Let me give you a couple of minutes just to get that done and then I'm going to talk you through the answers. Might be a good idea to just pause your video here to give you some time before I go through the answers. I'm now going to go through the answers with you. So hopefully you came up with the following. The exposition is the beginning of the story where characters and setting are introduced. Then we move on to the rising action where the main character faces a series of conflicts. The climax is the most exciting part of the story where we learn the outcome. Then we have some falling action which is the events leading to the end of the story. Finally, we have the end of the story, which is the resolution. I think it's really important to note that the resolution doesn't have to be happy, it just has to satisfy the reader that they know how the story is being tied up. So that's what I want you to have in mind as we talk through today's lesson. That's your overall structure. And if you to imagine that you're going to write a story after this lesson, you might want to use one paragraph for each of the sections. So in total, your story might comprise of four or five paragraphs. Now, moving on to the plot diagram in action. So I thought I'd use a story that I think most of you will probably be familiar with. And I'd like to talk you through how this looks in action. So I want you to imagine Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The exposition might be Harry living with his aunt and uncle. Hagrid visits Harry and tells him that he's a wizard. That sets the scene. The rising action is then when we are introduced to the antagonist Draco Malfoy, Professor Snape's being unkind to Harry and his friends, and we're introduced to the character of Voldemort. The climax, the most exciting part of the story, is when Harry goes through the trapdoor and realises that it's not Snape, but it's Professor Quirrell who's doing all of the mean things. Your falling action then is when Dumbledore visits Harry in the hospital wing and explains to Harry how he survived his first encounter with Voldemort. Lastly, you've got your resolution, where due to bravery, Harry, Ron, Hermione and Neville win extra house points. Gryffindor receive the house cup and wins. I hope that that has explained the diagram to you in a little bit more detail so you can understand how it might look for an entire story. Now the next activity is designed to get you thinking about how you might start your story. Now it's really important when writing a story that we break down our story into each sentence. 
every sentence needs to be really, really interesting. And I want you to think of something that I refer to as filler sentences. Often when we write a long piece of writing, we can get a little bit carried away and a bit caught up and we stop thinking about each sentence and we put these filler sentences in that really don't tell us a lot of information and sometimes they're not that great and we could actually get rid of them. So the way to avoid doing filler sentences is really think about every sentence that you're writing. So I will read this introduction to a short story to you. As I read, I want you to look at where the arrows are and think about what makes each sentence exciting. Silence. Lost, desperate, hopeless. Rubble crunch beneath my feet as I work my way towards the church. In the corner of my eye, I saw orange blazing flames licking away at what was once my home. Now, if you look at that first sentence, you'll probably notice that it's just one word. This is really effective in a short story as it hooks us in. We get interested straight away. We don't have much information yet though, so we want to keep reading on. The next sentence is a set of three adjectives. Again, we're not given much information, but we get a little bit of a sense of the atmosphere in the story, and it's revealing slightly more information whilst building a little bit of tension. The next two sentences are both examples of sensory imagery. In the first sentence, we hear rubble crunching beneath the person's feet. And in the last sentence, we know that you can see some fire. This gives us a little bit more information, but we still don't have a full picture. And therefore, we're intrigued as the reader to read on. I wonder how you could apply this to your own short story. In a minute, I'm going to show you an image and I'm going to talk you through writing your own introduction using some instructions. It's going to be really important that you follow my instructions to come up with an opening that's interesting and makes the most of every sentence. So let's have a look at the image. This image here is taken from, I think it was a hurricane in Texas. And I want you to imagine that you're there and that you're in the middle of this hurricane Perhaps you're standing next to one of the lamps, or perhaps you're in one of those houses poking your head out the window. Wherever you are, I want you to think about what you might be feeling, what you might be thinking, what could have happened before, what might happen next. We're together going to write a short introduction following five simple instructions from me. The instructions will tell you what to include in each sentence, it's really important that you follow those closely so that your introduction is really interesting and we don't get any of those filler sentences. So, your first sentence then. I want you to use a one word sentence. Really hook in your reader. Give you a few seconds to come up with that. Okay, so you should have written your first sentence of just one word and you've got the reader interested. The next sentence, you're going to include three adjectives. You can do this in different ways. You can do this in the way I did it in my story by putting just a list of three adjectives that sort of set the scene and give the reader a bit of a feeling of what's going on. Alternatively, you could use a longer sentence that has three adjectives within it and you're using verbs and nouns. Okay, you should have written your second sentence now. Moving on to our third sentence. Describe what you can see, hear and feel. Again, there's different ways of doing this. You could touch on all those senses in one sentence. Alternatively, you might wish to write two or three sentences using each sense in a separate sentence. Try to think about details, such as the splash or the spray of the waves. Maybe there's a glint in the sky where the sun is starting to peep through. OK, 
Okay, in your next sentence, I'd like you to include a simile or a metaphor. A reminder that a simile has as or like in the sentence. A metaphor says the thing is the other thing you're comparing it to. Her eyes were sapphires rather than her eyes were like sapphires. Okay, moving on now to your last and final sentence. This sentence is really important. This will finish your introduction. You're going to use pathetic fallacy, which is where we create an atmosphere using the weather. For example, the grey clouds rose above them ominously. We can see from that sentence that something bad might happen. It sets a little bit of tension and a little bit of mystery. Whatever is going to happen next in your story can almost be foreshadowed in this sentence. So have a think about how you might do that using the weather. You may wish to refer to the storm getting wilder. Maybe some thunder and lightning has begun at this stage in your story. So that's it year six, well done. You've now completed your own introduction. What I would like you to do is just let's go back and have a quick look at our plot diagram in action. Hopefully you wrote this down earlier, but if you didn't, just before we finish, a quick reminder. Your exposition is the start of the story where you set the scene. You've got your rising action with some conflicts. Your climax is that really important, exciting part of the story where we find out the main answers to our questions some falling action where things start to fall into place and the resolution, the end of the story. I hope that you feel inspired to go away, get creative and write yourself a short story now. Feel free to use the image that I showed you and carry that story on. Alternatively, feel free to use the diagram to help you write your own story. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that that's given you a little bit of an introduction into what English at the Archer Academy is like. Thank you.